Yo, what's going on? I'm Lex Astro, and for the last four years, I spent making myself into a Star Wars inspired character. This past weekend, I was working on the interior of my spaceship, and I ended up making this cool chair, and I figured that I'd show you how I did it. My biggest reference here will be the Herman Miller Eames chair, my favorite chair design like ever. I want it so bad. It's too expensive uh, for real life me, so for now, this will have to do. <laughs> Here you can see I had the chair blocked out very roughly. This really helped me have a reference for scale as I built out the rest of the scene. To start, I separated parts of the reference into different objects, then selected some of the planes of those boxes, duplicated them, split them out again into other objects. Then I used the solidify and bevel modifiers to add some depth and stylize it, the edges a bit. I pretty much did this for the rest of the design. I just duplicated planes out, separated them into different objects, messed around with the values for the solidify and the bevel modifiers. I'm sure this isn't like the most amazing process for like games or something like that, or like, you know, high quality animation. But for me, this works perfectly fine. But I really enjoy it because I'm only really working with uh, single layer planes and then using the solidify modifiers to add the depth. So everything's pretty much uh, non-destructive. Everything is editable later on. I don't really have to worry about moving points around uh, for a whole cube. Instead, I could just work on one plane, which works really well for me. I messed around a little bit with how the armrest would come out of the chair and overall how like things are connected together. This is where I actually learned a good amount about the actual Eames chair uh, just by really looking at it. I, I've never really looked at how the me mechanisms work, uh, but I realized that the back and the arm armrest are kind of connected to the inside of the side of the chair and uh, that's what gives it this kind of floaty look. Uh, and so I kind of just emulated that a little bit with where the connections are. And last thing I was thinking about was how this would uh, sit on the floor. Would it be uh, just like a roller chair, which seems kind of lame, or would there be like some crazy mount? Or I even thought about having it like be repulsor lifted, so it's kind of floaty. Uh, but my main reference that I that I really like is from Fallen Order. The ship in that game, the, I think it's the Mantis, is so is a, is a masterpiece. It's so nice, uh, and I really love how if you look at the cockpit, the chair is kind of mounted on this arm, and all the controls are uh, for piloting are connected to it. I don't know if I'll do the whole cockpit pit uh, similar to this but I think I'll definitely be inspired by uh, the the swivel mount or whatever like this chair mount thing that uh, I think is really cool so now on to texturing I use this plugin called fluent materializer it is not necessarily required for any of these steps uh, there's a few different methods of getting the edges uh, edge detection here and and things like that I just really love the way the tool set works. It basically lets you uh, do a bunch of layering with uh, nodes. And it comes with a bunch of procedural textures. So what I did is grabbed one of the grunges. Again, you could probably make some of these with, with noise textures or grab like image textures and, and use them for this purpose. But I grabbed a, one of the grunges. It has the ability to blur a little bit. So uh, instead of having all these intense details, these grainy details in the grunge, I blurred it out. So it's mainly just kind of big blobs of, of black and white. And I use that on the base color. I'm trying to find some good saturations. Uh, you know, this uh, ultimately is an animation project and I want it to be colorful. I think I could even go even more uh, contrasty than this. But for now, this is what I did, uh, kind of a blue and then a red complement. I fit the grunge in to add some black spots into the blue. Then I used the masking features of Fluid Materializer. Again, you could probably do this in a different way. To detect the edges of the geometry, and then I used another grunge texture to add some inconsistencies in the edge, so it's not every single edge that is being detected. Using the blur of the grunge also helps it be a little bit more stylized. You know, things like Fortnite don't have really realistic grunges that are super, super detail they have sometimes a bit more simple forms where the edge wear is so yeah i'm going through and messing around with the bevels as well sometimes the solidify and bevel modifiers can dictate how the procedural generation works with some of these textures the great thing about fluid materializers uh, library it has some options for normal maps so i added in some paint details to the metal to add a little bit more character some more uh, texture to the metal and then I also added in a polyester fabric normal map to the to the cushions. And the cushions is something I forgot to add into the modeling part, but it's the same process that I used before of 
uh, extruding planes, making them their own objects, and then messing with the solidify. And especially the bevel here in the solidify, like adding in a lot more depth and then rounding them a bit more to get a more comfortable look for them was super important. Yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with, with the texturing that I got here. Uh, I think it's going to be a process that I follow for a little bit more stuff. And again, I'll probably go back and saturate the colors a little bit. I think that ultimately will be good. It's hard to get a gauge for colors sometimes in the viewport. Uh, when you're in a in a gray environment, you might think that something is a little bit too saturated when it's actually undersaturated. So that's going to be something I, I try to mess with in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something. And uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this, what more you'd like to see from my process. Uh, I'm really excited to move on from just creating the character. I've been working on the character for so long and I'm excited to start making props and, and worlds and landscapes and things like that. And I think those will be a little bit more entertaining and useful to, to show people than me like making the helmet over like a hundred times or like trying to figure out how arm uh, anatomy is. So uh, let me know what you think and what you want to see more of. I appreciate you uh, tuning in. And yeah, Lex Astro out. Thanks. Peace.